Hello, I am Quinny. Welcome to the channel, guys. In this video today, I'm going to be giving you my four things that I want to see from Celtic between now and the end of the season. Thanks to my, my, my friends and supporters, it's so rare. We managed to get old firm tickets at the drop of a hat. So I was at the game. It was my fourfold firm. It was a great, um, great occasion. I had a great time. But the match taught us a lot of lessons in terms of where the squad's at the now. And it did really show us as well with Rangers' kind of defensive prominence, some real issues that need to be tackled head on before now in the end of the season. I'll be giving you my thoughts on the game as well as the four things that I do want to see before the end of the season. I'll also be explaining why they're so important that we get some of these answers in as early as possible, as well as if we don't, what the consequences could be. At any point in the video today, guys, if you do laugh, you learn, you like something or whatever, please please do like and subscribe and share and retweet and all that good stuff. Stay out of trouble and let's get stuck into it. If you could hit the subscribe button, I do daily global football content, everything from wonder kids and rising star managers to fantasy football and watch alongs. That will also automatically enter you into my April giveaway. A rare new season edition MLS Cup champion Anton Tinnerholm and two limited goalkeepers. If you want to stick around to the end of the video, we'll get into all the giveaway stuff again there. Now, I want to start off by saying, I mentioned it on the live stream uh, on Monday night last night, that watching Rangers last Thursday against Leipzig, and for context for anyone who's watching this and isn't watched any of my content before, uh, I've, I've, I watch a lot of Leipzig. I watch a lot of Bundesliga. I watch a lot of Leipzig in particular. And I fully expected on Thursday night and on Sunday for Rangers to be absolutely mopped all over the place. And it didn't happen on both occasions, right? First and foremost, right? Leipzig, great attacking team for Rangers to keep them out. It was a real testament to them because I watch Bundesliga teams every week try and do that to them and then counter attack. And Rangers were quite unlucky with their counter attacks, it must be said. Anyway, how Ange Postacoglu can watch Rangers versus Leipzig, which I'm sure he did, how he can watch that when Leipzig went with a front three of Olmo and Kunku and Sobislai, which, you know, on paper, profiles and dynamics that they offer on the pitch isn't too dissimilar to Kyogo, Jota and Maeda. How he can watch them persevere, and bear in mind that, I'm a Celtic fan, I love the guys we've got, right? But Nkunku, Sobislai and Danny Olmo are world-class elite youth prospect talents. If they are going to knock the door away at Rangers on Thursday night for an hour, 80 minutes, however long each one of them stayed on the pitch for, and ultimately get no joy, I don't know why Postacoglu thought we would be able to rock up on Saturday. And I suppose the counter-argument would be, well, they've done the hard work for us. They maybe ran them into the ground Thursday. And that was maybe my kind of attitude coming into the game in some respect. But I fully expect this to start with Jackie Marcus. If you watch the Leipzig game, as soon as Andre Silva and as soon as Forsberg come on, which for all intents and purposes to us is Jackie Marcus and Rogic, right? As soon as those guys came on, it made a huge difference in Thursday night. And equally, I feel that when those changes were made for us, Rogic in particular, I don't think Jackie Marcus did very much. Um, it must be said, by the way, I was at the game and I was absolutely out my face. Like, I had a bottle of Mad Dog at like 10 and it was a great day. It must be said, I had to go back and watch highlights and catch up with stuff to really know what my opinions formally were on the match. And that's where I've kind of got to with this. Because when I watched the game, like, we did the usual stuff that Celtic wanted to do in terms of creating little boxes in the side of the pitch with, you know, Maybe Rio, Calmac, Taylor, and Jota. Suck about five or six Rangers players into there. Make one or two passes, break out in its space and try and go make some attacks from there. Or maybe switch the play if it gets a little bit too crowded. And uh, we tried all that stuff and it just didn't really work. It really did feel like we were a man down. Greg Taylor put in a great effort going up and down the side of the pitch, right? But he loses the ball so often. Rio Hitate was just not at the races, of course, as we know, right? But the real question marks that it throws up to me is when you watch Rangers, right? And, you know, putting in context the Leipzig game and the old firm and even the cup uh, the week before if you want to use that, right? The way they're playing is to a very similar level, maybe a little bit higher, but it's the same it's the same kind of level and it's the same sort of dynamic as when Celtic have had to walk into qualifiers in the past and in the very last round before the group stages you've got Malmo or you've got Copenhagen or you've got, you know, that kind of level of team and they knock us out over two legs because they just, they make it really difficult for you to create chances and they're so fit Elite, elite performance athletes maybe take the football technique to one side the actual like VO2 max and all that caper for all these guys is you know elite level you know they can do it for 90 minutes they can do it three times a week and when you're not able to pick apart teams like that or when you're not able to really unlock the door through uh, patterns of play and repeatable routes to go is when you know, Celtic traditionally would get knocked out of Europe in qualifying stages or not do too well in group stages, that sort of thing. So Rangers is the real last test of a team that will really give us that test 
for probably the next six months. You know, I don't know the next team we're going to play Rangers and we're not going to play any European qualifiers. So we're going to rock up into the group stages quite green behind uh, green behind the gills. Is that what you say? And it's great not having the, the qualifiers. It's great that we can have a real pre-season for the first time in probably like two decades or whatever, where we don't need to rush in and go play in Iceland and go and play in Malta and go to Kazakhstan and do all that caper. That will be lovely, right? But we will be missing some of that test element of playing real competitive European style teams, you know, like Rangers have, have demonstrated to us over the last week. And the team that went out on Sunday can definitely play that way and can definitely open up those teams if they're all fit and available and they've had a good pre-season and there's good minute management in the squad and all the circumstances are perfect, right? But even when all the circumstances are perfect, you still need that extra cutting edge, that extra guile, and we just did not have it. I didn't see it coming. I had no idea. When we're building out from the back and we're getting the ball into midfield, I, don't, I didn't see with O'Reilly and Tatati, especially just with the way they, the way they both kind of play. Uh, O'Reilly was fairly decent, it must be said, but I just couldn't see it. felt like we were a man down. It really, really did. And there needs to be a real plan B, and it's not just like throw, you know, the centre forwards, um, throw the centre forwards on or put the centre backs up front or anything like that, but a real plan B, an option B. Plan B doesn't need to be when everything's at a loss and it's like, oh, throw a Hail Mary at it. Plan B and option B can be as well for when you're playing a totally different style of opponent or quite a unique style of opponent. Nullifies your plan A or makes your plan A much more difficult to achieve. And yeah, there is a strong argument for like the best teams, the best managers will impose their tactics on the match, will impose their will on the opposition and I'm all for that. But you need to also pick your battles with these things as well and understand that if Rangers are going to bank in with two banks and just look to break on the counter-attack, then having an extra man at the centre of the pitch that can collect the ball in tight spaces, hold the ball up for a couple of seconds while the runners go by him into the box and while the overlaps happen and while somebody comes short, you know, these different dynamics, especially central to the pitch where there is so much fight and there's going to be fouls and all that kind of stuff. So all of that takes me on to the four things that I really need to see from Celtic between now and the end of the season. And the reason it's important now is partially because they are going to be fatigued is because the opponents they're playing against like Hearts don't really have that much to play for they're kind of set up at this moment in time but certainly uh, when we played Dundee United and we played Motherwell they have stuff on the line to be playing for the higher they finish up the table of course is better for them from a lot of different reasons financially to the club I'm sure the players get bonuses as well as the potential for European qualification I think Dundee United are sewn up at this stage almost but that being said when we get into the new season and everyone's had a fresh pre-season and it's like the first five games we're playing on Motherwell away and over at at St Mirren and we beat everyone at 4-0 and everyone's thinking oh we're amazing we're great and then we get to the group stages and everyone's going oh brilliant we've got Dinamo Zagreb or whatever and we just totally um, overestimate ourselves and underestimate the opponents because of the acid test that we've had in the interim is something that I'm cautious of now and that's why I want to see this stuff again like I'm saying before the end of the season so the first one would be with in mind the way we kind of play and it's quite obvious that the manager does not want to put O'Reilly in the Rogic role he tried it at Bodo it didn't really work out I would very much on Saturday against uh, Ross County uh, pardon me Hearts a bigger pardon I would very much like to see a midfield three of Kalmak, Rogic and O'Reilly in the real role in the Hatate role who's going to be a bit more dynamic across the pitch and whatever uh, it doesn't seem that he's been able to do that for an extended period of time on match days the few occasions he's been put in that job which then puts me onto the page of as well as I would very much want to see a midfield of O'Reilly if he does want to start O'Reilly he starts them against Rangers so surely there's a good case to say that he will start again on Saturday but I do not think and I know he's trying to run him into the ground and this is what it's all about play for a big team and play for Celtic Rio don't care if you're fatigued don't care if you're drained you'll play you'll play you'll play but there comes a point where it's like he's just not delivering on the pitch he was just giving balls away all over the place he played one or two nice passes so anyway I would actually the best midfield three I would uh, the midfield three that would make me the most excited to see come Saturday would be Callum McGregor in his usual position O'Reilly where he played against Rangers and Turnbull in for uh, Rio Hitati. That midfield three has a lot of potential and a lot of promise and it's a very important midfield three for us to try and get some match day experience with because there will come a point in the season at some point where Rogic, Rio Hitati, Kyogo, Maida are all going to be flying away to the other side of the world to do qualifiers and cups and all sorts of capable. O'Reilly, Turnbull if they are, and Cal McGregor, if they are going to be internationals, they're not going to be really leaving Europe by and large most of the time you know so when we do have those guys on extended travel we want to know that the guys that don't have extended travel can actually complement each other and actually can play together 
in an effective manner. So uh, Turnbull, O'Reilly and Cal McGregor would be my number one midfield I'd want to see come Saturday, but I would expect it's maybe a bit more likely that we see O'Reilly, Rogic and McGregor. I, I, again, I think all both those combinations I've laid out are vitally, vitally important, which takes me on to the next one, which kind of comes into this vein as well, is I want to see Idiguchi start, I want to see Callum McGregor and Rogic, I want to see that three, or Callum McGregor and O'Reilly, whatever the manager prefers, but I want to see Idiguchi in the McGregor role, and let's see McGregor in that Rio Hitate job, and we all know McGregor's phenomenal there, but let's see how he does with Idiguchi doing his job, and then he's playing against O'Reilly or Rogic, whoever the manager deems as being the optimal partner for him, because again, I think that'll be a very important question, if Rio does go off the boil, or if Turnbull gets injured, or if O'Reilly gets injured or suspended, these things happen, then where does Idiguchi fit? It has to be in that six, and if it is, brilliant, let's see him in the six, and McGregor in that eight job that Rio's doing, and let's see what kind of action we can get out of that and what problems that might be the solution to further down the road. A lot of this does circle around Rio Hitate, right? And the last thing I want to say on Rio, the third thing I would like to see from Celtic before the end of the season is Rio Hitate coming into left-back and doing that inverted full-back job that we've seen earlier this season because when you look at actual on-pitch, right, and forget about centre-mids and left-backs and forwards and all the rest of it, if you actually watch Celtic and you watch those positions in the pitch when we do have those inverted full-backs, you know, Juranovic is very good at it and so is Rousen. They're basically playing in a centre mid position, but they're starting much deeper. And where Hitate has been coming unstuck is when he's putting a lot of pressure. He's, he's been asked to do a lot of pressuring in the middle of the pitch, and he's having to run around like a headless chicken, chase the ball down there, receive a pass here, play a ball there, run, 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 do all that stuff. And he gets, he, he, you know, ever since he's got here, and I know he's had a full season under his belt, but he has got burned out in games. You know, putting him in that left back spot where he can take like coordinated like breathers in the game, I think can be really good for managing himself, his own stamina through ninety minutes. And he's much better on the ball, I think, than Taylor. And even when Taylor is getting into the final third, if you imagine that was a fitter Rio Hitate doing everything Taylor's done, I think we would only get more out of that. So again, even if it was for twenty minutes at the end of one of these matches or something, I would want to see. Rio in that left back job and if not we need to be looking seriously at a new left back in the summer as a, as a competitor and a potential upgrade to Taylor. And then the fourth thing that I want to see from Celtic before the end of the season is Kyogo and George's Jack Marcus play together whether that be Jack Marcus through the middle and Kyogo on one of the wings or we have Jack Marcus doing his job Kyogo playing off him we still have Maeda or Abada out here, and we still have Jota or Maeda out here, and we have that real front four, and then we maybe have a little midfield base of maybe Adeguchi and Callum McGregor, maybe O'Reilly and Callum McGregor, maybe Rio and Callum McGregor, something like that. But we do need a definitive plan B for like if we're playing a different team or a different situation, whatever. Or if it's like all these guys are fit and they're all like our best players, what's the and I know we're maybe sacrificing a little bit in terms of midfield talent, quality, and a body, but depending on inverted fullbacks and the opposition, it's definitely a shape that could work and it's a shape that Ange Postacoglu played at Yokohama F Marinos with Maeda and his team. So I wouldn't totally rule it out and I would love to see it for one match before the end of the season as Kyogo maybe in that kind of 10 job where he can just run around and press like mad, go ahead of Giacomacus if he wants, same with Maeda and Giacomacus can be central and be that kind of you know, that figure point up there and have all these guys running off him and playing passes to him could be carnage in the best way possible. I think without getting any kind of indication towards some of these solutions and some of these ideas that I've laid out in this video, we are going into next season really blind in terms of how far we can really compete at the top end of European football. And like part of the thing that I'm always ambitious around Celtic in terms of my own fandom and my own support for the club is I always want to see us do as best as possible at the highest level possible. And that's always my concern. Whenever we get to group stages throughout my whole lifetime, I'm always like, we want to be qualifying. We want to be able to take nine points at home, get a cheeky draw on the road and get an upset win or whatever. You know, we're capable of that. We're Celtic. That's the way we should be looking. And what's, what it's going to take to achieve that Next Champions League cycle, when we're in the group stages, you know, by all accounts at this stage, I don't know if we have the answers to a lot of those questions right now, and I'm sure we'll find out as time goes on, but it would make me feel better that they're thinking about this kind of stuff further on, because you're just not going to have the same level, you know, we're going to do pre-seasons and friendlies and all that, but, you know, the one thing I like about qualifiers, especially when they're not too early, is you get real competitive football really quickly and it gets the team up to a high level really quickly. You know, my favourite seasons with Celtic in terms of I think some of the better years we've had is when we've only had like one qualifier to get into Champions League or we've had two qualifiers and um, you know, we have a nice pre-season, good rest up, da-da-da, we go in, two legs, we win, that's ideal of course. 
But um, obviously everyone would rather not have qualifiers, but I think the absence of that, we could be going in three months into next season thinking we're like eight out of ten, when we're maybe still six. I don't know, I think we're about six or seven. Um, probably with fitness levels, probably closer to the six. I mean, everyone's fit and available, maybe seven pushing up. But anyway, I digress. Let me know in the comment section down below, guys, your thoughts on anything I've went through. I'd be very interested to know. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this one, guys. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and share, and retweet, and all that good stuff. Stay out of trouble, and I will catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye bye. Let's get into all the giveaway stuff before I let you go. I'm still doing monthly giveaways and I'm making it easier to enter. If you want to be entered to win this month's prize or any future giveaways here at the channel, all the same rules will always apply. Hit the subscribe button, you need to be a subscriber to enter, then leave a comment down below. Each month, a random comment from a random video will be selected as the winner, so the more videos you leave a comment on, the better the chance you've got of winning any of my giveaways. All the winners are announced at the end of videos the same way as we're doing here. The best way to keep up with the content has always been to hit the notification bell with all notifications turned on. As always guys, if you've enjoyed the video today, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. On screen there now is some other stuff that I've made that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. Stay out of trouble and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.